Hello, Texans fans, and welcome to the Fuddruckers Texans Players Show. Mark Vandermeer and D.P. Sidhu with you. And our guest tonight is Tremont Smith. How's it going? I'm going. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Uh, it's great to have you with us tonight. Now, we're going to give away a Fuddruckers gift card a little bit later on. We used to do the show. I shouldn't say used to because I'd love to get we, back there. We are still doing the show. We're just not doing it from Fuddruckers. Yeah, I didn't complete the sentence there. You're <laughs> I right, just jumped in it. Uh, I just yeah, finished your thought for you. Maybe next year. We'll have milkshakes and burgers. We'll yeah, it would be, it would be nice but we'll give away some gift cards uh all season long that's how we're handling it tremont smith is our guest and you recently signed a contract extension normally i don't talk about this stuff on this particular show but it happened in season which for the texans by the way is big news because historically no contracts passed out during the season so that was a real feather in the cap for you so how did it make you feel to uh, to get extended during the campaign it was big you know it was just a confidence boost to know my hard work and dedication into the team is being seen and just I'm doing knowing I'm willing to do whatever for the team do you feel like you're playing differently after signing the contract like knowing <laughs> that I mean just knowing that you're here next year like you've got that at least there's no uncertainty for what your future right is. if you ask a couple of the teammates I'm walking with a different type of pep in my step let them tell it so, <laughs> oh really I guess you can say that just I a can little see bit. that yeah. <laughs> yeah. alright so what did they say though did a lot of guys say hey you got a um, contract yeah, dinner's I'll, on you or I wear <laughs> some different pair of shoes oh you got uh, new shoes That's that That must be that contract oh, money. contract okay. money <laughs> just keep it, making it a hard time <laughs> That that's pretty funny well I, I gotta think that though i mean if, it's not like lebron james money right right but it's nice so do you buy anything different do you do anything differently or is it like uh, that's going right in the bank yeah right in the bank just hide it from myself actually you know stick to okay. the same routine not try to get over myself or anything but just hide it from myself basically He's got a little bit of a shopping love of yeah, shopping. Online shopping, yeah, I do. A, 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 lot, a lot of shopping, yeah, unfortunately. Of shopping, unfortunately. Who was the first person you called when you found out about the contract? Oh, uh, well, I was definitely talking to my agents first, and then I was going to call and tell my mama, but she was in. The, she talked to my agents before I did. She so, already knew. Yes, yeah, she already knew. So it's like I didn't even have to tell her. Wait, does she call them or do they call her? <laughs> oh, they both. That? It's a close relationship. You know, we all good. You know, they do a good job of communicating with me and my family. So it's just. It wasn't surprising that when she told me they are, she already knew that that they told him so told her so. How closely does your mom keep up with stuff like that when it comes to your contract stuff? I know you said you had been talking to Nick Casario throughout the season. Right. Does your mom is your mom in the loop on all that stuff? Uh, Pretty much sounds she'll, like she'll no. stay out of it. My agents will do most of that handle most of that talking, but No, I mean with you. Does she talk to you about what's going on with all uh, that stuff? not really. She won't get too too in depth into she it. Doesn't. But yeah, she, you know, stay in her lane, you know. Don't get too nosy and just <laughs> be excited when something does come up. That's like that. nice. Yep. That's really nice. Vermont Smith with us. Okay, so take me to Anniston. Is it Anniston? Anniston, Alabama. All right, so where is Anniston? This is You can tell I did my show prep on geography right. here. I really didn't. <laughs> so where is it relative to other major uh, points it's in near, Alabama? It's like 40 minutes from Birmingham. Okay. I'm like an hour 15 from Atlanta. All right. So if I do go home, I go home for, what, two or three days and then go straight to Atlanta because – Anniston is a real small city. It's nothing to do. Mm-hmm. Did you? Uh, many, I was going to say, how many people are in Anniston? I probably graduated with what all of seventy-five, eighty people. So, oh wow, like those wow. Show yeah. how small the city is. Did you grow up a fan of the Crimson Tide or Auburn? And is it usually just one or the other when you grow up in Alabama before you're affiliated with a university? It has to time? be one or the other. So mm-hmm. I lean towards more towards Alabama, of course. Nick Saban, you know that uh-huh. great franchise. It's hard not to like them, but. Growing up, I was a big Cam Newton fan in 2010 okay. when he was in Auburn. So I was just, I was die hard Auburn then. But after that, it was just straight Alabama, roll top. So have you faced Cam in your career? You must have because you've been with a few different teams. But I don't think so. Ooh. But that's got to be interesting, though, when you face a player that you followed when you right. were either in high school or college. Yes, yeah, surreal. So, like, coming into um, when I got drafted to Kansas City in 2018, mm-hmm. Eric Berry was my favorite player. Okay. When he was at back in Tennessee, and I used to have the same number, wear the same number as him and everything. So, me and him for the first time, it was crazy. Like, I'm walking with the player personnel guy, like, oh my gosh, that's Eric Berry. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, that's your teammate. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So, I talked to him, chopped it up with him, and he just. Told me just calm down, you know, you you in the element now, just be professional and just told me everything about being professional. How long does it take to kind of get over that? Get over being not starstruck necessarily, but you're in the NFL and everything's just brand new and these players, you've seen them on T V and now you're with them. It took me all about a a week or two, you know, mm-hmm. when I just I slowly kept just talking to him more, just asking him questions and you know, I, I finally settled in, I was like, all right, this is gonna be regular, this is gonna this is gonna be regular for me, so 
act like I've been here before. <laughs> Any other players that you really watched a lot growing up and you got to play alongside? Uh, I go with Aaron Rodgers, of course. You know, he's a great guy too. Great on the field. Great off the guy, great off the guy field. And mm -hmm. um, Tyron Matthew, Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he I was, was with here him with us. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're probably my top three right now. All right, let's go back to uh, to your youth. You're playing high school ball. What now? You had a ton of interceptions in high school, right? Yes. And you were able to uh, go to Central Arkansas. We'll talk about that in a moment. But in high school, did you play both ways, and how did that go? Because it was a small school, right? Yes, I played. I actually played quarterback and safety, and like the punt returner, the mm. punter, kick kick field goals. Jeez, yeah. he, kick was, field he was goal. He was, a, Frank he was there in all three phases. All, all of them. <laughs> you were every all of them. You so you were? Did you ever get breaks during no, the game? Kick return. That's it. Kick return. I, yeah, they wouldn't let the quarterback do the kick return. But. Of course. And he also holds the record, school record for most touchdowns in yeah, high school. I do. 36. You, the pa Passing, rushing? Passing, passing and rushing. I had 20 rushing and 16 passing. All right, so that wow. preseason game where Reed kicked off, where you say, hey, 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 I'm a place kicker. Did you want to step up and do that? I see. I, I let Jay Reed handle the kick. I'm more of a punter. I can punt now. I can't. <laughs> okay. I kick with my toe and it hurts too bad. I don't see how oh, kickers yeah. do it nowadays. It hurts me too bad. Oh, I yeah. used to, I guess the high school football is way softer, but mm. these balls are different. And every time I kick them, my toe hurts. It's funny with the kickers because they're football players, but they're not really. Soccer players. Yeah. 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 But Fairbairn drills a 61-yarder on Sunday, so that had to be impressive no exciting, matter what the yeah. situation, right? That was a good moment of the game. That was one of the best moments of the game, and I'm glad he got that franchise record and set his own. Mm -hmm. Career personal record. That's that's great for him. I thought that was so cool when he kicked it. How everyone just ran oh, out yeah. on the field. Like yeah, you as think a special, it was the game winner. Yeah, you would think. So. I mean, it was the end of the half, which is probably why he was able to do it because you don't have to worry about. I think he talked about after the game, you don't have to worry about field position. Right. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he probably wouldn't have gotten a chance to kick. Right. Unless yeah. it was a game winner. Yeah. Uh, what did you say to him? Uh, did you get a chance to talk to him? Oh uh, yes, yeah, so I just told him it was a great job. Keep going, and um, I seen him make all them kicks in practice like throughout the week. So it's just like we had. Plenty of faith of him just to throw him out there and just let him do what he can do. Tremont Smith with us. All right, so you end up at Central Arkansas. Before I ask you about that, you were in the Southland Conference. The field at Central Arkansas. All right, I know you get asked about this because this is one of those unique fields. We talk about Boise being blue, Eastern Washington red. being red. But you guys had the purple and gray stripes, yes. right, every five yards. That was kind of interesting so what was it like for you to be a part of that? That actually, going into recruitment, that actually kind of drew me in. I'm like, this is different. You know, i never seen a <laughs> color field. Really? I was like, mm -hmm. go check it out. It was fun. I, I love my time at UCA. The um, the turf there is actually, I don't know if they redid it, but it was hard as a rock. Like, Oh, really? It looks good, but looks can be deceiving. You know that, so. Is it because the paint they put on it to make it that color, or is that, I don't know. I Probably don't dried know. it out. I played at Eastern Washington, too, on that red field. We played Wait, them in the a, pl a playoff, playoff right? Game, yes. All right, so, yeah, there you are on the purple and gray, and now you're going to another <laughs> colored field. Messing up my head. It was crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, is that confusing? Uh, it's not confusing. It's just, it's different. It's fun to play on. It's, it's, a nice, it's, it's nice to play on. I like it. How did you pick UCA over, what, what were some of the other schools you were looking at? Uh, it was at? a lot of FCS. I was a late qualifier, so... I was talking to Auburn coming out, but I didn't qualify in time, so they just offered me a preferred walk-on, and I was mm -hmm. just like, I have too many FCS scholarships to prefer a walk-on. You know how that can go. You can go if they get injured, get thrown in the back of sure. the depth chart. So I just went when I know it was guaranteed, and just I had one my defensive coordinator, Coach Stewart, he was actually from Aniston, or well, from around that area, so he knew, and it was his, new, it was his first time getting that job up there in Central Arkansas. And he was oh. just like, I should bring you with me, and I was like, yeah, it would be good to get away, so. So you went with a defensive coordinator that you'd had some familiarity with. Yes, and he was familiar with my area and just seen me growing, playing growing up, so it was good. Do you think that helped you when you started playing there at UCA? Like, he already knew your skill set. Do you feel like you got more, a little bit more playing time just because it was a coach that Yes, and it was just because, you? right, and I feel like that played a, a major part in it, and he just trusted me, so that was a big thing. Yeah, you're in the Southland Conference, so you're playing McNeese and all these other schools Sam like Houston, that, Sam yeah. Houston, which – and now the conference mm. is just – they're breaking up it's the band. everywhere, yeah. yeah. I can't even tell you what conference they're in right now, honestly. It's, I think it's the Atlantic Sun or something uh, like that. A-Sun or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's a little bit different right now. But uh, you do have some prominent alums of UCLA, like Charlie Strong, yes. who uh, you're going to see this weekend, but really? I don't know if you saw him ever when you were there because he was there a long so. time I've never seen you. Scottie Pippen either, either in that – it don't bother me, but I was mm -hmm. like, I'd love to see Scottie Pippen. You know, he <laughs> yeah. played there. Why not? Scottie Pippen played there. Now, Charlie Strong's with the Jaguars as an associate head coach. Oh, so, yeah, he sure is. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. that's pretty cool. So you have a little UCA reunion there. Right. Now, when did you realize, though, like, 
this NFL thing could really happen for me. What you probably had the dreams from right. a long time ago, but when was it sort of in the grasp, in your opinion? Uh, probably towards like the middle of my freshman year. That's when I got to starting for the first time. I didn't start to probably like week seven, week eight. Mm-hmm. First game, I had two picks against Houston Baptist, actually, mm-hmm. not too far away from here. Yep. And, um, I don't know. It started clicking in. My defensive coordinator stayed on me, just being from the same area. He was just like, "You got a, you got a real shot at this. Like, I want you to." Stay focused, keep your head in it, stay out of trouble. That's his main thing. He says, stay out of trouble, don't get in trouble, don't get in trouble. And that's went through four years without getting in trouble. So, <laughs> And the rest yeah, will take care of itself, Yeah, the rest right? is history, yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You get drafted in the sixth round by the Chiefs. So what about draft weekend? What was that like for you? Because you're waiting around a little bit. You hope to get drafted, but right. okay, is it going to happen? What was that Saturday right. like when you got picked? It, I was so anxious. Like, the whole week I was anxious. I um, took a week off of training. I'm like, I'm telling everybody, don't call my phone. Like, mm-hmm. And, of course, come Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm getting these random phone calls. I'm like, oh, this is the call. Oh. This is the call. And it's oh, just no. like so stop. heartbreaking <laughs> at the same time. And I'm just like, y'all, please stop calling me. Like, I ended up getting another phone just – so people cannot call me. I'm mm-hmm. like, don't call me on this phone. You can't have this number. I'm not passing this number out. What What was that draft day like for you, getting the call and, and finding out you'd gotten drafted? Were you worried that there was a chance you weren't going to get selected because you're nearing the end of the draft here on day three? Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I just stayed positive the whole time, you know, had my family with me. We had fun, you know. Of course, we partied a little bit, just celebrate the time. But that whole process, it was, I mean, it was just, I don't it's, can't even describe it just and then once i did finally get that call it's from i remember the number it's like a plus five five it was something weird and i'm just like this is definitely the call that answered <laughs> it and mm-hmm. it was just crazy so kansas city chiefs so you're there the first year mahomes starts right right he was watching alex smith the year before right now he starts and they move you to running back in the preseason yes what was that like and what went into that um i don't know uh, Andy Reid, he always told me, because he knew I played quarterback in high school, and you know Andy Reid's big on his offensive players and just having the uh, ball in the athlete hands. So he'll just joke around. I'm like, yeah, coach, I see. I'll, he'll watch me throw the football probably, what, 60, 70 yards. I'm like, coach, I still got it. So he's like, <laughs> he's like all right, Man. now I'm going to hold you to it. So one, Wait, uh, you should be the emergency third string guy. Yes, I have we, to be. We talked to Brandon Cooks about this last week. Who did he okay. go with? Well, he went with himself because oh, he wants all the Of course, of course. <laughs> Who's he going to throw like it Bre- to? That sounds like B. Cooks. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll help the team in any way. He said, everything but offensive line, okay? Because we we're asking about running back, but here we go. Another uh, running that's, back. That's, that's a great point. Well, also, tight. I mean, I've seen Titus Howard throw the ball in practice. Yeah, he, he can is he big. Has yeah. He's big. He's he used to arm. play quarterback, yeah. Mm-hmm. He could play quarterback, too, but, I mean, then someone's got to block his block, blind yeah. side. Well, we could go with the Wild Titus formation. The wild <laughs> yeah, that sounds explosive. <laughs> Hard to stop. Hard to stop. All right, so they move you to running back though for a little bit. Did you get some reps in a preseason game? How did that go? I probably got like four or five carries in the preseason game. I actually then I moved out to receiver uh-huh. that same preseason and um, ended up making a fifty-three man roster in twenty nineteen and moved right back to defensive back. So <laughs> yeah. I feel like Coach Big Red was just testing me just to see, <laughs> wanted to see if I could actually do it and. I held up. Were you disappointed? Did you feel like at any point, oh, maybe there's a chance they may line me up at running back? Did they get your yeah. hopes up? I feel like they wanted the, they put me at running back first because he put me at running back. And, uh, the receivers coach come up to me and was like, you're going to end up in my room. I don't really? Know, yeah. I guess they were trying to see the toughness or I was right. going against linebackers every day. <laughs> just see the physical side of me. And then so, boom, I did that for like, what, two the last two weeks of training camp. And then they moved me out to receivers probably that last week. It was just—it's just fun. It was fun being on that side of the ball. Though. It was very different. What's the hardest part about playing running back? Pass pro. Yeah. Oh, they you—you you still had to do that, and oh yeah, even though it was preseason, yeah, yeah of pass course. pro. And in and that offense, in practice, yeah. Mm-hmm. And just knowing, being on the same page as the quarterback, you—you got to think just like the quarterback, especially when it comes to the guys blitzing where your line going, just with hold to step up in. I—I I, I probably think that's the hardest thing. And what about for wide receiver? I love why I can't complain about wide receiver. Probably just mm-hmm. taking the hit, running across the middle, taking those hit from linebackers, mm. or catching yeah. a now screen, and them, those D line come screaming out at you. And yeah, that's probably the toughest thing. Tremont <laughs> Smith with us. All right, what about Mahomes when you're there as a rookie and you see the talent? What was it like to be around him and spot that early on? That was probably the, one of my toughest training camps, going against him and like we had Demarcus Robinson, Tyreek Hill. Mm. 
Um, DeAnthony Thomas just it was speed, and, he, and then Mahomes can throw it as far as he wants. It was impressive to see, and I, seeing it in training camp as a rookie. I know as a rookie, I was like, this team gonna be pretty good with Mahomes back there, just because. Yeah. I mean, he still had that college style a little bit, but made it turn NFL, and now everybody's doing it. So it was fun to see. It was real fun to see. All right, you're uh, obviously you're you're fast. So if I line up all the Texans speed guys at the goal line and say run to the other goal line, are you winning that race? Uh, so a hundred yards? Mm-hmm. No, let's I'm not go winning. forty. Oh yeah, easy, <laughs> easy. easy. You run out of gas. I'm right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm top heavy, so I burn out. I'm not the track guy. I'm... All right. So he actually sec- never he never ran track. Never Isn't ran that hard track. to believe? I just yeah. assumed that someone. I- I want fast. to talk to the UCA coaches right now yeah, and why? say, well, you're missing out, okay? <laughs> yeah, I think it's too, too bought in in football. That's probably mm-hmm. why, yeah. Mm-hmm. They yeah. Let me get up. But 100, let's see. I have to go with, I like AJ. Oh, yeah. AJ Moore? Yeah, 100. Yeah, he's quick. 100, he's yeah. quick. So I sometimes walk into the caf- cafe and you got, it shows who has the top speed in the game. And who do you game. see the most? I see AJ. I see AJ up there. I see you. And then you. You guys are up there quite a bit. All the time, yeah. I lead, though. I probably got, like, what we played, 13 games. Mm -hmm. I probably was number one about eight, nine. So So that's speed in the game, right? That's your top Top speed speed in a game. Right. They measure all that. It's really cool. And then they measure how... How many yards you go of of full like full speed is technically eighteen miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So they Mike Mike and his staff do a great job of tracking that. He like you had like four hundred yards of top speed this last game, and it's just like wow. How am I walking right now? Do you guys have Do you guys have any sort of? I feel like there should be a prize or something like internally for if you get the top speed, whoever. I know it's just it's, it's bragging rights right now. Like Lonnie got it twice this year. Every time you know, post it on all his social media. Like, <laughs> post it every week. I want you to post it every week. <laughs> we post, should, post, post yeah. wins every week. <laughs> we should start posting it. I mean, it gives yeah. us a little something extra. Yeah, right? I absolutely. I, I mean, I I don't know why it's an internal thing. I think it's a great feather in your cap. No, to say that I'm looking up at that monitor, speeds. and they have like hamstring strength. How do they measure that? Who has got the strongest? <laughs> they do the Nordic, and it's it, it hurts too. Like we have to hold ourselves in this like plank position. It's it's crazy, but it, and they it measure that. Us. Yep. Jonathan oh. Owens, I think, was always on top of that hamstrings, and I saw him in the cafe, and I and I, I was like, well, congrats, because I mean, well, he's, we're in there, <laughs> we, I mean, the we're just, <laughs> he had the strongest hamstring. He's getting week. tips from Simone. It's That's not right. fair. Yeah, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not he got fair a at all. He has a Chico. He has a Chico. Traymond Smith was all right. So I I asked you about speed here with the Texans. Now, when you're in camp with Tyreek Hill, uh, give me a little glimpse, audio wise, of his velocity. Cheetah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Cheetah, it's it's the perfect fit for him. Like I see yeah. why they call him Cheetah. It's, it's crazy. His and then he he has gears. He has, of course Brandon Cooks is fast. A fast guy too can change gears real well. So mm-hmm. I mean it just I mean that's elite Olympic track speed. It's crazy. Absolutely, and he All can right. get in and out his breaks. He's a great great receiver. Yeah, he he's terrifying when yeah, uh, he when is. the Texans are playing those Chiefs. Uh, all right, so you go to Green Bay. So you're around Mahomes. Now you're around Aaron Rodgers. And what is that like? Because he, look, I know he's been in the news for a lot of different things this year, but he strikes me as somebody who knows everything that's going on with every aspect of the team. You know, on the field, he's got total command. But what is it like to be in camp with him and just be around him? Uh, he's a true. You can say he's a true leader, a true professional. He does everything right. The little things, as far mm-hmm. as meetings, going to be in the meetings early, going out there throwing early. It's just the little things I caught up, I picked up from him, and he's really a great guy. I didn't think he was going to be like a. I didn't think he was going to be stuck up or anything, but I'm like, all right, this Aaron Rodgers going in. And uh, um, the first day he walked up to me, he was like, you're that fast kick returner we just got on. I'm just like, hey, really? you know something. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for noticing me. <laughs> it was Aaron Rodgers, yeah. So it was exciting. Though. Being around him, it was fun to watch. Oh, that's great. All right, so Philadelphia, give me something on them because you were with the Eagles for a little bit. Right. I was probably, what I signed there like week 14 of 2019. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah. I was P-Squad for three weeks, so – I went out there longer than, you know, the COVID hit, and I started that COVID season with oh, them. Oh, yeah. Mm. So we never went in. We just did all our workouts virtual and then come to the That's got to be hard with your with a, a new team and your – And never been in there really. And oh, man. Can't even show face like I want to be in the weight room and just mm-hmm. put in all the extra hard work. So, And then I stayed there. They cut me like the, the day right before training camp. Okay. And I wouldn't say I panicked, but I'm just like – Y'all just made me do all this virtual work, and I was kind of like, I was, <laughs> boy, I was more mad than anything. Like, why did y'all make me do all that then? But you go to the Colts from there, right? I had a trial with the Colts, made it there. Had mm-hmm. a trial one day, and then practiced the next day. It was crazy. 
Wow, like that quick of a turnaround. That, it was that quick even during COVID. I felt like during, during COVID, COVID, it was it was just a lot of waiting it was, around in the hotel. Because it was training camp, so you know they they want to get you out there. It, yeah, and then I was already probably like a little a week late, so they were just trying to get me in there, adapt as fast as possible. What was it like catch, getting up to speed in camp with a new team when everything's been virtual and you've not been with them? It was different at first, you know, just catching up on the playbook. All these guys had the upper hand on me just because they was in their virtual meetings mm-hmm. that off season. It just I just do a lot of staying after practice, staying with the coaches and extra mean time, just get to know everybody. All right, so I know you face the Colts as a Texan, but the Colts to me are like the biggest enemy in the world right. in this league, That's right? It, yeah. I mean, just awful. So you're there with Phillip Rivers and those guys. I know that the organization, there are a lot of good people working in that organization. Great, yep. Like we, we know a bunch of them, even though I hate them on a football <laughs> right. field. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on a football level, you on a football them. level, yes. right. yeah. Mm-hmm. DP's actually from I'm Indianapolis. I'm from Indianapolis. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is hard for me because I grew up a Colts yeah, fan, but then living in living in Houston, there was no football team for like five years, right. and then we get the Texans, and I was we were going to we were going to the games. And now when I go back to Indianapolis, my family is like, how, how can you how not can you cheer? Like I said, but if you don't work for a team, it's very, it's like with you. Like, you can be with a team, you want them to win, and as soon as you leave that team, right. that's it. And I never even All worked ties, for the Colts. Right. Yeah. Growing up, you were probably Falcons fan? I never had a – I was always a favorite player type of guy. I never had just oh. like a favorite set team. I had favorite players. Tremont, when you watch football on TV, I, I got to think playing the position you play – it's it's probably really disappointing to not be able to watch all 22, right? Right. Because you're watching the line, and, yeah, I mean, it's the game. I mean, the game is the most popular televised sport. Right. Yet we don't see so much of what's really going on downfield till the end result yeah. of it, right? The camera flips Yeah, over. unless you get a good replay or whatever. Right. That's got to be weird for you. Yeah, I mean, just it's, it's, it's weird in its way, but I enjoy watching football. It doesn't bother me at all, you know, mm-hmm. just – I love just seeing people compete on this on the highest level possible. It's, it's always fun to watch and fun to be a part of. All right, so a couple of other things here. After the Colts, you end up with the Texans last offseason, right? And we just talked about your contract extension and everything. As a kick returner, uh, you get to have the ball in your hands. That's a big thrill. The decision to return or not. I mean, do you have a green light if it's like a yard deep or something? Yes. So Frankie, uh, he'll tell me before the kick or before the game, he'll be like, all right, we're bringing it out four deep. We're bringing it out five deep. If you oh, touch okay. the end zone, like just depending and then what situation we is in, we are in the game. It's like, right. of course, if we bef- going before halftime, I'm bringing out anything. You can try to kick it out of bounds. I'm going to try to catch it, stay in bounds, and mm. I'm going to return it. So, I mean, we like he like I said, he just he has we have our situations where he let me green light or leave it in the end zone. Is it weird with the roof open? It was different. You see, last game, I, I was some, like two of them I was supposed to return, but it got caught in that sun, and it was crazy. You were like, forget it. And yeah. it was pretty cold, too. I'm yeah. like, why would we wait till <laughs> in December? Uh, trust me. If you Please. do it any earlier, it's too hot. Yeah, it's going to be too hot. hot. The fans are going to complain. Mad. You guys might be okay with it because you practice in that. Right. But uh, but with the sun, the air doesn't circulate well in the, in the building, in oh, the bowl. Okay. So even if it's 80 degrees or 75 outside yeah. and sunny, It'll be miserable. the fans are going to cook in those seats where the sun shines. Right. I was going to say the shadows here, I, I, we were talking about this on the pregame show. I think the worst shadows I've ever seen are in Indianapolis when that roof is open. Yes, it is. Because yeah, it's, they've got those beams. And yeah, so does, I, yeah. that's got to be a challenge. And see, here it was just that whole backside of the field, like, like yeah, from the ten yard, yeah. It's either it's either in the shade or it's in the sun. But I feel like in Indy, you could go sunshade, sunshade. Yeah, you can't hide it. You can't no. hide from it. Either. No, with no matter what angle you're looking at the ball, it's always the sun. How, but how do you practice something like that? Because sometimes you're in in an open air stadium, and sometimes you're in a dome. It's just adjusting. I mean, like you said, like we might have a sunny practice during the week, and I make sure to catch it, catch extra balls. If I know going into Sunday, that that might be the um, weather forecast. So. I mean, just staying after practice, going early. Frankie do a good job of getting me out there early and just to catch balls and practice all type of situations. Is it harder in the rain or is it harder in the sun? Is there one weather condition that's the toughest? Wind. I, wind, wind. Wind is crazy. Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> Especially for the punts, you know. Them punters can hang that ball up there and just it gets stuck mm-hmm. in the wind and never know where it goes. So I'd probably say with the wind. All right, Tremont Smith is with us on the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show. We'll give away a gift card next, and you'll have to know something that we just mentioned in the last few minutes here. It'll be super easy, but you'll have to get it right first, and we'll set that up for you next here. And among other things, we're going to talk about his life, 
get to know him a little bit better. He's wearing an interesting T-shirt today. It's the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show on Texans Radio. Great to have you listening to the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show on Texans Radio. Mark Vandermeer and D.P. Sidhu with Tremont Smith, our guest. We'll give away a Fuddruckers Texans gift card right now. Just a Fuddruckers gift card. It's not really a Fuddruckers Texans gift card. Well, we are the Texans, so, so we can I guess we can call it that. We are the Texans. Uh, you go ahead and hit the email, TexansRadio at HoustonTexans.com. It's TexansRadio at HoustonTexans.com. And tell us, just give us one of the former NFL teams for Tremont Smith, one of the former teams, Get it right first, Texans Radio at HoustonTexans.com. Win a Fuddruckers gift card. Do it now, and uh, we'll take care of you. I have a question. Okay. So last week we had Farrell Brown on, and he was talking about uh, this year's rookie competition is decorating the position group rooms. Mm. And so he was uh, not super thrilled with the job that Brevin Jordan <laughs> did in their room. He really liked the O-line setup, but I, uh, what, what what is uh, going on in the DB room? We don't have a rookie. Team. Yeah, you don't have mm. any rookies. So it's, it's I was wondering, like, who did it? We have no snacks. It's hard to get snacks. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Nobody to carry that. You got to carry your own stuff back in then from we, practice. We actually have a we have a rookie technically because you know not you're not a you're still a rookie until your second year third game. So we have a guy kind of in that situation that he ain't played his three games yet this year in okay. his second year. So Graylin Arnold, we oh yeah, yeah. last year. So he's tough though. He's he tough as a rock. He's not going for nothing. He's like, no, I'm not a rookie. My rookie year was last year. I did <laughs> all like, my rookie <laughs> duties last year. Like, so he's disputing his rookie yes, status. Yes, he did him last year though. He's from Beaumont, by the way. So, so I don't know what that is means. the room just undecorated? Or you guys undecorated? Have to- <laughs> Lonnie brought some snacks the other day though. I give him that. Lonnie bought snacks for the room. Lonnie brought snacks. Well, that nice was guy. nice of nice him. Guy. Great guy. That is good. <laughs> but he's not going to decorate the room. He's, like, he's not. No, we're not. Our, our 100% know our room's not going to be decorated. No way. We're not festive, I guess. All right, so <laughs> you're wearing a Boys in the Hood t-shirt, which I really like, because this is an old school movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a movie that's a little bit older. All right, right. what is it, early 90s? Yeah, it's way back. Okay, and so did you see it as a younger guy or? Uh, no, I'll probably say some around in the high school. Mm-hmm. Kind of older, you know. So it's Ice Cube. It's Cuba Gooding Jr., right, in Boys in the Hood. Yep. All right. I was watching it with my kid, actually, you know, who's almost 16 years old. Six, yeah, that was about the time I watched it. Yeah. Probably the same No, it's, the same a, it, it's, a, it's a great story. So do you like a lot of older movies? or is yes. this my favorite, my favorite movies probably the, all the Rush Hours. Them are my okay. Top. Oh. <laughs> yeah, those are dated, too. You know, it's funny because, it's all right. You know, we have people who work in our department, like video people and stuff, and they haven't seen a lot of movies from the 90s, even the early O's, right? Yeah, I'll bring up a movie reference. And they'll no, be like, what? Like, maybe people watched more movies back then. Now there's Netflix and there's it's shows. Netflix, yeah. yeah, I feel like I don't even watch as many movies as I used to back in the day. There were a lot more big hits. Yeah. See, I just started. I just got into the movies a lot. I used to couldn't sit still long enough for to watch a movie. I hated them. I didn't hate them, but I just... It had Never to be a movie you really like. The yeah, attention it span, really it takes a long time. Yeah. Do you, are you into shows? Do you yes, watch shows? Yes, I am. Favorite, best show is Money Heist. What's I've heard on? about this. What's that on? It's on Netflix. Okay. They're about robbing a bank. It's great. They have Wait. costumes. Yeah, costumes. I just see the memes, the Money Heist Oh, memes. really? I got to see this. They see, I'm always looking for new shows to watch. Yeah, it's nice. It's <clears> All right. That's good. Money Heist, what else? What else are you binging uh, these Power. Days? I've been okay, yeah. Power. I haven't watched great. this. Wait, is but it's now it's done and it's, it's the It's a new uh, one. It's the sun now. So you're watching that one? Yeah. Did you watch the old one? Yes, I watched all of it. But I okay. actually so it's been out what, 3 years? You're right. I just watched it this year. I oh. was binged it. I was like, yeah, I'm not watching it. That would be like my friends would be like it's so good. Like you have to watch it. I'm like, and I'm not getting into it. And then I, I, I already <laughs> thought I was behind. So I was like and I finally gave it a try. The first day I watched it, I probably watched like nine episodes. I, I thought the first season, two seasons were good. The last yeah. season. The last thought I had. Yeah, it was a bit much. I, 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 I love like, this. I love my this my favorite characters are all dying off. Yeah, right, right. A lot like, of I can't. I'm not invested as much. Wait, that was it. on Stars originally, Stars, right? Right. Yeah. And then is it on Netflix now? Or no, it's still on Stars. Still on Stars? Okay. Wait, do you have like cable TV or do you just do streaming stuff? I have cable TV and I probably watched cable twice this year since being in. So yeah, I need to get rid of it. Honey. You, you need to, yeah. You need to move on. Just I do a use lot the of Wi-Fi. Yeah, I do a lot of YouTube TV. I love YouTube TV. Okay. So your so your Netflix and your cable. That's it. Because that's pretty good. Hulu. And Hulu. Oh uh, yeah. Handmaid's Tale. DB likes that. I one. love Handmaid's Tale. I love the Mindy Killing. And then that, like, no, but now I'm on Apple it. Plus. Now there's shows on Apple Plus, Is and it? I got well, I, I'm on HBO Max. HBO I have everything. Max. That's great. Yeah. I gotta yeah. have it all. 
Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like they it, pick one, they give you one show that you really want to watch, and then you got to subscribe. And then once you, you subscribe, things, then you end up watching another show, right, yeah. and so then you never unsubscribe. Right. So you're spending three hundred dollars plus the Wi-Fi on TV. Uh, it's well, crazy. Th- like Apple Plus, I wanted to watch. Everybody was talking about Ted Lasso, and there was another show that I wanted to watch. There was the the morning, uh, show. The morning show with with. Uh, See, the, I knew that. I didn't even have Jennifer to. Jennifer Yeah, I didn't I'm very predictable. <laughs> but then, but then it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna get this for the first month free. And, and I'm going to binge it. I'm going to binge. I'm going to watch all these shows. And I'm going to cancel it. That never happens. Right. By the way, that if somebody can pull that off, that's great. I just don't have time to watch that much TV <laughs> in a month. Tremont Smith with us on Texans Radio. Okay, so uh, we talked a bunch about your youth and college career and everything. So after your playing career is done, what do you think here? What are you thinking? Uh, I know it's not going to be for a while. We don't right. want it to be for a long time. But it has to cross your mind. What are you thinking about that? So I just bought I bought my first house this year out here in Houston. So Ooh. just going through that process and just talked to one of my best friends I graduated with from high school. He's a, a realtor out uh, back in Alabama. Okay. So like one of the top guys in Alabama. And just, I don't know, we would just talk about flipping houses, buying mm-hmm. houses, renting oh. them out. So got, thinking about getting into real estate, honestly. Good plan. Yeah. And good. I fell in love when I bought the first house. Like that was a... Like when I signed the papers, it was a good feeling. So yeah, I, I, I was like, like that's pretty. That's pretty bold that you just you bought a house in Houston. It was before the contract extension. Before the contract, yeah. Right Ooh. when I signed, yeah. Yeah, but it's a good tangible asset, DP. And All right, good, but, great area. Yeah, Houston has everything you need. Mm-hmm. He does like, which is great that you like Houston. And now you know you're going to be here for a little while. Right. And he's got a dog, Louis. Can we talk about Louis your dog, too, yes. Louis T? He's got a French bulldog that wears Louis Vuitton. What? Louis T wears Louis <laughs> V. Yeah, exactly. Super extra. <laughs> Super so it's, it's kind of nice to have a house for the dog at yeah, least. Yeah, it is. Yep. And then I train in Louisiana in the off season, so it's probably like a, just a two and a half hour. Commute. Yeah, that's so, super convenient. Yeah, it's very convenient. Are you going to do holiday decorations? I mean, you have a house now. I know. You don't I have, have no to decorate kids. your DV room. <laughs> I know. I have no kids, so I'm just like, mm, do I have Put to Put a ribbon around the tree or something. Shouldn't you do it for the neighborhood? Shouldn't you do it for the neighborhood? Yeah. But see, our neighborhood is still getting worked on too, so it's like construction everywhere. Oh, okay. So it's like, oh, really? It's I getting developed. Lights. Yeah, I put up lights, and you won't see it because of the construction. <laughs> you know what? That, you have a pass. Yeah, maybe pass. Yeah, yeah I have a pass. Like, you have a pass. So it's, <laughs> do I need a tree though? I feel like do I need a tree? A Christmas tree? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it adds some cheer to the house. It would be nice. Now the dog might really enjoy mess it, it up. Yeah. <laughs> have all the ornaments. You got to be floor. careful. No, um, but I, we, our dogs are about the same age, right. and we just put up our tree, and he doesn't even mess. He doesn't with mess it. with it. And it's like it, it, he's bored. He doesn't even. It's almost like he doesn't notice it. Like, do you <laughs> not see this big tree? <laughs> Will yeah. there be gift giving among the players? Yes, we do a secret Ooh. Santa in the room with okay. the corners. So we all put our numbers in, and we draw, and we have a thousand dollar minimum. The expenses. Wait, do you wait. know? Do you know who you have? A thousand dollar minimum. Yes, it's, it's expensive, it's Mark. Expensive. Why do you act so surprised? It's always like uh, yeah, one or two athlete. or yeah. three thousand. It's always something crazy. They wanted like twenty five hundred. I'm like, eh, no. yeah, it's usually in the thousands. <laughs> yeah. I in would the say. department, we do gift card roulette, <laughs> <laughs> and Mar- Mark provides all the gift cards. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like you get ten dollars at Subway. Enjoy, <laughs> and then we trade. And then we yeah. trade each other for the yeah. gift cards. So you know who your secret yes. Santa is? Jimmy Moreland. Oh, okay, Jimmy. Moore. So you can tell us. Do yeah, you know? Who, you, you don't. Do you know who has you? No, I'm. I'm getting close. I'm cracking down on it though. Okay, because you could drop some major hints, I right? I'm gonna just want? give them all my sizes and just let them <laughs> just have post. a ball. Yeah. Wait, are you? Are you, you're not allowed to do gift card? Yeah, we could. You could. Yeah. Thousand dollar gift card. Thousand dollar gift. Card. I want. I want to be a defensive back. <laughs> uh, I think the receivers are more expensive. Somebody more expensive. I think the DBs are DBs and receivers DBs would be and hard. Receiver, yeah. Because you guys like all the fancy stuff. Yeah. I don't know if $1,000. Almost not. No, probably it might not pair, be enough. Pair of shoes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, know, you, need this, you need the sizes and a gift receipt, yeah, so right? Yeah, so I just dropped that in a group message. And so oh, you have a group message? Yeah, that here's my shoe size. Yep. And I like these I wear, brands. Yep. Wear size large. 34 in pants. So they get anybody you something else get totally you different. <laughs> they get you something totally different. Something for the house, maybe. <laughs> and they <laughs> usually did it. Last year, they said they uh they pulled the Secret Santa card um, numbers and then it was some how you can trade your gift, like you can buy a gift for somebody, but you can also like take a white it. elephant. Yeah, sort of a situation. I never did it that way though. But they, I, I wouldn't like, like that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like it either because what if someone gets a really bad gift and then and then all you gotta do is just take it. Yeah, all right, here. Yeah. Take or someone gets a really gift good gift for someone and right. then take it from you. I don't. So when are you gonna do the exchange? You guys have like a, a holiday dinner among we the travel, days. Oh, we travel what the twenty? We probably travel on Christmas because we play. Mm-hmm. No, no, no! Your Christmas Day, you're here actually, because you're here oh. the day after Christmas, so you're not going anywhere that week. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll it's probably next do week. it that day or the next day. Some guys have kids, so I know they're gonna 
enjoy their time with their kids. They, we'll probably do it the day after. Yeah, you probably uh, come in late on Christmas Day for right. a walkthrough or whatever you're going to yeah. do the day before it came. Then, All right, uh, we've got Tremont Smith here. One more segment, and let's get into the Jaguars on Sunday. That's next up for the Houston Texans. A little bit on the game day routine. And then some here on the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show on Texans Radio. It's the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show. Mark Vandermeer, DP City with Tremont Smith today. And I'm a little stressed out because we were talking about holiday shopping in the last <laughs> segment. I'm thinking all the stuff I have to do still. And it's just... But what did we do before Amazon? This is what I was thinking. Right. What did we do before Amazon? Now you we can just went look shopping. Online. We I, went I would, shopping you and bought stuff. I love going shopping. You could not pay me to go near the Galleria until no. January. Right. No. I, like, I'm not yeah. going anywhere near the Galleria. It's, it's crowded awful. enough. They don't need you there. They, they don't. Need, I don't need to be there. Right. I can do anything Although online. I'm sure they miss you. They you know? do. They, they don't did, miss me, but they miss you. They, I do. I miss, I miss going there, but I try to get all my returns and exchanges done. Like it's November. too big, though. I, every time I go, I never can go all the way through it. I just. Oh, quit right. Well, you got to hit the yeah. hot spots. You just yeah. got to know where you're going. Just know what stores to go yeah. To. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I haven't explored all. The if stores you just there. browse, it's not going to work. I know. It's you can't. Much. You can't go spatially. You can't start in a corner because you're going to miss a bunch of stuff <laughs> at the know, other yeah. end. All right, so you go on back on the road after a three-game homestand to play the Jaguars. What is it like being on the road for you? You know, you're staying at a hotel. You're not at home. I know you guys always stay in a hotel the day before. Um, a home game anyway, right. but it's just a different kind of routine. What is it like for you? Uh, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, sometimes we can have a big time change. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's the biggest thing that bothers us. But going to Florida, what, we just going an hour ahead. An hour. Hour. Yeah, hour ahead. So that won't be, it won't be no, nothing too much different. You know, we still do our usual meetings. Mm -hmm. And then just after that, I'm really just knocked out in the bed watching, watching all the college games, really. That's what I'm doing right now. You so, go to bed pretty early on the road games? Yes. Uh, Catching early. up on your sleep? Oh, yeah. And then I sleep on the flights, though, so it's like I'll be knocked. Like I probably won't make it. Oh, you can sleep on a plane. Knocked out. I'm oh. the same. I want to I want to sleep that entire flight, and then I want to sleep in the hotel. I, I, I feel sleep. like you guys have – it's good for your body to recover. It is, yeah. It's probably not super restful on the I don't on know. I'm, I, got, I got elevated to the first class, so, like, I'm laid all the way out. I feel like I'm in a bed, so I love it. <laughs> You got elevated to first class? Yes. Is that because of the contract extension? Uh, no, it, it happened earlier this year, so – well, that's oh, nice. That's I mean, nice. I'm bad four years. I deserve yeah. it. Oh, okay. He's like, <laughs> I four. deserve Year it. Four. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. That's different from when I was traveling with the team. It was just coaches up in there. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, Unless the planes are different now. It, they're a little larger. Oh. All right. Well, larger. For social distancing and everything <laughs> Mark, else. Mark, feel free to bump me up to first class Sorry. if I make it on the plane <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, I, of course, I will I'll have to fight Mark that. for the seat. Yeah. Yeah. I won't do that. Uh, but yeah, be, but being on the road and what what about you know the way you prepare for a game the morning of like what you eat, what you listen to? Do you have a set routine or do you change it up a little bit, Tremont? Yes, I have a set routine. Wake up, you eat the same breakfast. I've been eating the same breakfast for what fifteen weeks now. Two uh -huh. scrambled eggs, French toast. Um, I always take the early bus to the stadium because you know I go out with the returners, so we always, we the first ones to go out. So I go out, go to the early bus, go get my massage, IV before the game, and just. Be ready. You got to be out there with the returners because you just have to get that early peek at the conditions yeah, and the sight the lines wind, and everything like yeah. that. Make sure the sun ain't beaming like this last week. And mm -hmm. But it changes. To the wind. It <laughs> does. It does. Like today it was hot. I was, I'm was. i excited though, but you yeah. know, it's been cold these past few days and it's finally heated up, so I'm excited about it. And it that. might it might rain in Jacksonville. Ooh. Yeah. Of course. It won't be like the Tennessee game. That that had you guys have had two bad weather games this oh, year. I love it. Yeah. Oh, you do? You I like playing it. in the Players rain? Players love it. They oh, yeah. love the rain. The rain's fun. The snow is fun. It's miserable at times, but snow is pretty fun, too. Yeah. Wow. I would not expect that from someone that grew up in Alabama. I know. So you'll go there and you'll check out the conditions and then... And then, do you do you are you out there? You you come in for a little while, and then what do you do? Do you listen to music? Do you listen to like, music, get my massage, get rolled out by string. You get a stuff. massage before the game. It's like a flush, like a quick little flood recovery flush, just to get the yeah, like a half a massage. Okay, <laughs> pretty much. No, not a full one, a half one. Get get my. I want a massage on. before the game. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna work. Got to get the IV, stay hydrated. IV before the game. Ivy before the game. Really? That's good. Then you don't have to worry about it. Do a lot of guys do that? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You load up on the fluids that way. Right. So drinking something's not going to do it the same way. It doesn't, but, like, I suck at drinking water, like, at certain times. I really have yeah. to force myself to drink water, stay hydrated. I really have to Isn't that amazing? Myself, so. I mean, get an IV. You guys practiced out here during training camp in some serious heat. Serious. 
Yeah. I mean, this group, and I've talked about it on this show before, in the history of this team, I've never seen so many training camp practices in the middle of the day. It you guys did it a brutally lot. Brutal. Brutally So hard. anybody who was new is like, no, yeah. this historically <laughs> welcome, did not happen this way. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> yeah. But does that help you get ready for the season and all the other practice conditions? Because what we noticed, what there was a day last week we were out in the practice field. It was 80 degrees. It was pretty hot. Yeah, it was pretty warm. It was like I, 85. I about, yeah. yeah. But it's nothing compared to camp, so it right. kind of gets you ready for these Yeah, it just keeps you in a tip-top shape, you know, just being out there in that heat. you got to stay hydrated. It makes you stay hydrated. It makes you just stay on top of things mm-hmm. so you won't miss a practice due to cramping or you never want to catch a full-body cramp either. Like mm. I think we had a guy the other day almost catch one, Jordan Vesey. Like, how do you get, a, get? How do you catch a full body cramp? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't had He's one. He's like, don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. even. But you've played in sn- you've played with some cold weather teams. So this time of year, it's snowing yeah, it's, and it's cold it's and it's freezing. Free. Right. So is the IV hydration situation? You still have to be equally mindful of how you're hydrated. Yeah, I definitely cool. got to. I got to be more mindful of it now being here in Houston since it is so hot. In the cold, you might can get away with it a little bit just because it's not as hot temperatures, but. In the heat, you got to have those IVs. You just got to be hydrated and, like I said, don't want to catch that full body cramp. Do you have to worry about cramping more when it's cold just because your muscles are not? Uh, it, like, does so. physical coldness make keep your muscles cold? Yeah, I feel like it, you got to stay loose when it's cold. I feel like like you get tight real right. quick and just stiff. So I feel like it's more of being stretched out, being ready to go, being ready to roll. Your half massage. Yeah, my, my the half cover massage. flush. <laughs> What's it like to play a team for the second time? You're playing the Jags, and you beat them the first time, and I'm sure they remember that. Yeah. So some extra motivation there for them, perhaps. Yeah, it's always tough playing a, uh, playing teams twice in division games just because, I mean, they know they know us in and out. We know them in and out. So it's just like you really got to come and win your matchup, win your mm-hmm. one-on-one. It's, of course, it's going to be a, have a lot to do with the scheme and stuff, but at the end of the day, we know what, we, what each other is doing, so it's about who performing the best on that day. Is it good from a prep standpoint because during the week, like you've watched film on these guys already, and you can sort of do a little bit of extra digging. You've got right. more games under your belt that you can go back and, and watch. And then we can go watch our old game and see like if we did mess up, why, what, why, mm-hmm. what did they do to beat us right here? And it's, it's, I like playing the same. But of course, then they they can do the same thing. Yeah, so. they, they're doing the same thing over there as well. So. And, uh, you know, one more for you here on, look, the record isn't what anybody wants it to be, right. but game day, there's such electricity still in the air. Oh, yeah. and, and what is your feeling like when you get to a game and participate in a game, despite the fact that the record isn't what you want it to be? It's still coming out here and being the best version of myself. We still got to come out here and perform because, you know, this is a performance-based um, business. So, I mean, just – Going, coming out here, I know our record is not the best right now, but we're working to turn that around. All these games to end this year is going to go and roll into next year, so we want to start off on a good foot. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. We no really problem. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Trim and I up. never had fun ruckers either, so. Okay. Ooh. Well, we'll set you up. We'll yeah, get you a gift, gift card. card. Yeah, come on. Uh, I might have to go against this. <laughs> I can answer my question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. We might have some extras. Yeah. I hope it doesn't go against the salary cap. Well, it's only a Fud <laughs> gift card. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I, I think it'll be okay. Tremont oh, Smith yeah. joining us on the Fud Ruckers Texans Players Show and Texans All Access is coming up next. Thanks so much for joining us today and go Texans.